find an empty page in your books. Um, we're gonna be working in portrait, you know, taller than we are wide. And we're gonna be doing an owl in the lot, okay? The first thing that we're gonna do for this project is we're going to draw a circle for the moon, okay? So if you have a cup, if you have a hydro flask, if you have a coffee mug, trace that to create your moon. I'm gonna just be using a solo cup here that I have in my classroom. Um, apparently they're really popular PE devices for uh, distance learning. I don't know why, but um, yeah. So that's where we are right now. So I'm gonna trace this solo cup. Perfect moon. Okay, and then I'm gonna place my owl inside of said moon. Okay, so I'm gonna use some searching lines. Even though I use that, that solo cup to trace a, a perfect circle, I'm gonna just inside this circle, I'm gonna just use some searching lines to kind of sketch out the head of my owl and I'm just kind of making a squished tomato shape or like a like a satsuma shape kind of like you know so that's my owl head and then they have kind of broad necks and then we're just gonna pull him down to here and I'm just kind of making this elliptical shape organically little space here for the wings on both sides you know All right. puffed out chest feathers and then we're gonna make really big talons where you know, he's grasping onto a branch. Boom. I'm just filling in all this here and then overlapping the moon a little bit is going to be a branch that's going to hold our owl up using searching lines again to just kind of so that branch, All right. going off the page. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like we have a, a feathered alien sitting in the moonlight on a branch. So we're gonna add some facial features, okay? I wanna slow down so you guys can catch up. Oh, I almost forgot. The tail feathers. So for delving into the face of the owl, we're gonna do this kind of widow's peak that comes down, okay? And we're gonna make like, almost like a bow tie shape, like a big butterfly bow tie shape. Just like that. So widow's peak, bow tie shape.
just like that. I'm gonna draw two large eyes. No, oh, it definitely looks like an alien. I don't know if you guys have seen like freshly hatched or really young uh, owls pre-molting or right before they basically get feathers. Um, they do look a lot like what people's interpretations of aliens are. They're kind of freaky. Like, owls are really long, and without feathers, they do look like aliens. It's, it's crazy. All right, so then we're going to also put in a beak. The beak is going to go down here, and it's going to be kind of almond-shaped, just like so. Bing, bing, bing. Almond with some feathers around it. And then we're going to kind of draw these a little bit dark and then put some black centers in each one of these. Okay. This owl does not look like he needs any more coffee. Right? And we're gonna basically leave, we're gonna preserve a little circle on there for catch light, meaning that it's the light reflecting off of the eyes of the owl. And we're gonna paint this area in here black and the surrounding circle yellow, okay? All right, <clears throat> hey, drawing's done. Gonna erase that line there. I'm gonna make this part of that foot covered up by feathers. Yeah. So you can only see like the tops of the, yeah, the bottoms of the, of the claws. All right. So now we have our drawing kind of done. We're gonna do a lot of the detail work is gonna be in paint. <clears throat> I'm gonna be using a, my trusty old Crayola 1000 size number seven brush. Make sure that you have clean water, some tissues. We just use a pencil and eraser. Uh, your watercolor pan, we're going to be using a lot of blue, black, some browns, uh, a little bit of yellow uh, for the moon. Okay, we're going to be doing some wet in wet, some uh, wet on dry, okay, some glazing too as well. So we're, we're going to do a lot of, of stuff today with this painting. And it's going to be fun, okay? So, are you guys ready to start painting? What do you think? Yeah? So, if it says yeah, Gracie shakes her head and smiles. It's okay, fine. Fine. John, how are we doing, buddy? Are we ready to get going? Yeah? You positive? <laughs> freaking adore you. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna start off with wet in wet. So we're gonna do the area around our owl. It might not go as dark as this. I went pretty dark. This is very Halloween-y. Right. He kind of looks like the owl on Winnie the Pooh. Really judgy, you know, kind of. <laughs> well, maybe we'll move beyond that. So we're gonna go straight into our water and we're going to kind of push what oh my water's dirty oh well that's okay it helps you see it and we're gonna go all the way down 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 and around right there. 
and we're going to outline the moon. What's crazy about this uh, bifang pa uh, paper is that it really like it's just soaking up the water. It just gobbles it up like it's dying of thirst. Oh, don't do glass. Okay. So just going over, moving some of this water around. Okay. Now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dip into the black, okay? I'm going to use black, I'm going to dip into some blue, okay? We're just going to start laying in some of that black around, okay? of wander around and blend and bloom at the same time. Okay. Let's go through and just push that paint around. At the same time, I'm going to go in again with the blue, grab some of the blue, and we're going to kind of blend it in here too as well. paper just really sucks up that water and it's going to be killing some of the effects that I want to have happen. That's working. That's working. Fun, fun. All right, I'm gonna clean my brush now. Okay, and I'm gonna go in and try and salvage some clean yellow. My, my yellow is really dirty. Man, let me tell you. That's what happens when you do. I'm kind of a messy painter. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real. I make an absolute mess of my workspace at home when I'm when I'm getting like doing a lot of painting I make a mess so what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to prep the space the moon space here with with water the water's a little yellow right now which is fine I'm going around the owl staying within the circle that is my moon from my solo cup all right, and I'm just pushing this yellow around, dipping a little bit here and then going in. And it's okay if I have like, I'm gonna keep some areas more intense yellow and other areas not. That's gonna give that cool like impression that like there's um, you know, dimensionality to the surface of the moon, even though it's like bright cheese yellow, All right? Hmm. There we go. That's better. You can see it better. 
sometimes this camera doesn't pick everything up. The reason also, because I have the lights off in my classroom, because it's really hot here right now. There we go. Oh, I like it. I like it. And then I'm going to dip into some yellow. While this is still kind of wet on the perimeter or the outside of the moon shape, I'm just going to stroke it with some of that yellow so that it mixes with those blues. I get like a halo. And then grab some water from my container and do a little blending. And the next thing that I want to work on now is the owl himself, right? Little lift, little lift. Hey, what's that? It's a piece of a racer. Ah, get out of there. So I'm going to mix black, a bit of black. Just the tiniest bit of brown. Okay, I'm gonna water that down a lot. And I use it as an underpainting for right now on the owl, okay? And it's a little dark. Grab that and just water everything down. And I'm just gonna use that little bit of black and stretch it, black and a little bit of brown and stretch it over the whole body of this owl. See that? Including the little feetsies sticking out. Cool, cool, cool. Pull that, pull that. And this is just going to be kind of an underpainting because we're going to be glazing, meaning that we're going to do multiple layers of watercolor over this guy, over this really cute little owl. That's our first layer. Now we're gonna subsequently go a little bit darker over the top. If I notice I'm mixing more. Test strip, it's a little wet. Try it. Grab some pigment. This is probably already, it's already dry. So I'm gonna go through now and add texture and shadows. I'm gonna go around the face. And this is just a little bit darker than the wash that we did over initially. Just a little bit darker. Just going through and using very light paint strokes to create texture. And this is another part of that glazing 
We are painting one, leaving them dry, painting over that with even darker or lighter colors, depending on what you're looking at doing. Loss is done. Someone's playing music. John. Is that you? Is that your music? Are you listening to music? Huh. Interesting. Zoom is telling me it's coming from you. I guess not. So I'm subsequently building up different layers. Now, I'm gonna go through and add even more black to the stuff I have here. And this is gonna be, I use for shadows. Let's just do a little test, a little test. Yeah, good, 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 good. So this is gonna be for the tail, to be interior shadows. I'm getting darker and darker. Just want to make them look kind of fluffy. See that? some textures to the to the front of our L in the face area too as well. For the eyes, we're going to go straight in with the black. I'm going to get it really thick. And we're going to go really light 
with adding the black to the eye. Okay, really light. Because as you can see, this is not going to be easy. Okay, watch. And I already screwed up. <laughs> wasn't able to hold on to that catch light. It problems with a big brush sometimes, guys. And that's okay. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush. As best I can. Grab a little bit of yellow. Straight from the pan. And put in the yellow that goes around the eye. And I can't do that either. Oh my gosh, everything's running. Lord of mercy. So a lot of times, even guys like me who've been doing this for years, screw up. Yeah, this is a fail. <laughs> ah, Lord have mercy. Goodness gracious. Well, fail or not, you learn something from everything that you do. One eye, two eye, one's better than the other. That's okay. Moving on. That's what happens when you just use one brush. All right, so we got to do some other things here. We're going to now do the branch. So we're going to, the branch that he's sitting on, we're going to mix brown and some black. Brown and black. Really water it down. There's Jack. And then we're going to just start to paint this on the branch. Now we're using wet on dry, because we want to have a little bit more control and add in the paint to the branch. All right. This is going to give us a little bit of control over the branch shapes that we want to make. Cutting in the areas that are wet and wet with brush strokes, all right? We, we want to make these look kind of natural, right? So I'm going to the ends and pulling, like I'm going to the end and pulling back. And then also using the brown to kind of cut the areas where we have like white shining through. We want to show those areas kind of getting covered up. Okay, I'm also going to cut in around the talons. I'm going to paint those black once this dries. As certain areas of the branch are drying, I can glaze over them with more pigment and create shadow at the bottom and lighter tones near the top of the branch. See that? It's kind of cool.
just using black and brown, just using black and brown. Hello, other car. <clears throat> Who's that? Who's creeping in on your on your Zoom, yo? She never took my class. What the heck? Why isn't she in class? That's laughs. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, she can take my class. She just has to do it through Zoom. So. And, and I won't fail her. <laughs> but she's tardy. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna do all the different values underneath here, which are gonna be in shadow. So we're gonna do again, wet and wet, okay? And do wet and wet. I'm gonna wet all this area here. Nee, 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 nee. Between the branches. Nee, 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 nee. Nee, 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 nee. I have, as you can see, I have really dirty water. It's dirty water, it's naughty water, okay? Cover this whole area with water. Push it around, move it around. Move it along, move it along, move it along. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Wet, 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 wet. Push it into those nooks and crannies of your branches, yeah? Okay, beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous. And then we're gonna just go in with the black, see? And just kind of Push it around. We're gonna make it really dark underneath here. All right. Just let it bloom and blossom and just move around. We're gonna move this black around. Okay. Blossom, yeah. We might kill some of our branch shapes just a little bit, but not too much. It will dry lighter than it is now. So I'm carefully just kind of pushing the paint into those areas that are wet, right? I don't want it to necessarily overpower and go into my branch. If it overlaps it, that's okay. Black near the edge, black near the edge. You're doing pretty good even after the debacle that is the the one eye of my own that's just all weird. All wonga. So the last thing that I want to do, because my branch is dry, is I'm gonna just make these talons black. Chilling, waiting for a mouse to pop its head out so it can feast. Mistakes, you learn from it. I think I, w I went too fast and uh, 
adding the, the black and not doing a test on the on my little test sheet over here before I added the black and it just kind of ran away ran away and then not waiting long enough to add the yellow but those things happen like you know if you rush things too much you know sometimes it happens but again it's all about the process and learning through the process and having fun with it too and also forgiving yourself if you do make a mistake right it's all about that